Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this video we are going to be discussing these 3D printed pan or pan and tilt mounts. So there's one down there which goes on the XUAV clouds, uh, and there's another one up there which is a work in progress just here, and I've got some other parts down here on the desk which we're going to have a little bit of a chit chat about. So just to be aware, I am use, using the camcorder in my hand uh, and it might be a little bit shaky. For that, I do apologize. Now with that said, uh, a big thumbs up to Andrew Bolton. Uh, you may know Andy, one of the lads which we fly with. I'll put a link to his uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook, his uh, YouTube channel in the top right hand corner now for you. Uh, and what he's been done is allowed me to share these 3D printed files so that we can make, and you can make, uh, these pan and tilt mechanisms. So let's take a look at one of the ones which actually Andy gave me originally, which is, this is printed with, uh, it's ABS with carbon fibre in it, uh, and you'll see that it comes, it's made up of three pieces, and this is the pan and tilt version. So there's our base plate, so that's the bit which we put underneath, uh, which you may notice, which is just down there on the bottom, but you may also notice that there's an extra one underneath, which I'm using to screw through, and that's a big tip for you, is that if you do have thin foam, uh, screw all the way through, uh, and then you've got an, an extra plate underneath, which you know is good uh, material to screw into. Anyway, so that's where we put our 180 degree servo in the middle of there, and we, if you look up underneath there, you'll see there's a place for a control horn. And you put your screw uh, in through the top. Okay, now another little tip for you uh, is that what I've done on mine, uh, actually you can see it just hiding, just in there. There we go. Can you see that little uh, servo screw? That's what I've been and used on mine to hold the uh, just the, the normal servo screw, not the, the machine screw. Yeah, I'm talking about the blunt wood screw version. <laughs> it's gone in the side. And then what you do is you mount a servo in this gap here, which we can see uh, in action just down here, like so. Uh, and we can also see in action on this one as well. Uh, now, I would strongly, and I mean this, strongly suggest putting a metal geared servo uh, in for these servos. And the reason for that is that, as I learned from my mini talent, uh, is on its main, it's like a hell of a whack, and I mean a really big whack. Uh, and you will notice, okay, also talking about tips, there is little to no room gap between the dome and the base plate. And that's my another big tip for you, is that when you get to sort this out, is that make sure it's almost a friction fit between these two pieces, and then that will stop this rocking backwards and forwards and then also come back to the metal good servo which uh, says you well what you know you know the same which I'm on about there's a plastic good one in there um, it's for the clouds it should be a lot softer landing than a mini talon uh, the clouds comes in really softly and uh, the mini talon comes in fast and furious anyway uh, coming back onto the topic uh, try and use a metal good servo uh, it does work with the Runcam Swift cameras just to give you a heads up if you do use a Runcam Eagle You'll need to, uh, don't know if you can see that just up in there, you'll need to just adapt, sand slightly the uh, inners just to get a run cam eagle to fit in there. And then you've got this top platform up here which you can then put a bit of velcro on and fix your run cam uh, or maybe a, sort of, maybe a session on top. Now this is what I've been and done with my one on the mini salons. So you'll notice that I've glued in a run cam uh, velcro strap, spit my words out. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what I've been and done on mine, and that's worked out really, really well. Now you may be wondering, uh, Matt, there's another version, what does that look like? Oh, hang on, I didn't get to the platform, sorry, there's three pieces. Base, that's your pan, which goes side to side. You'll need some free uh, M3 bolts, which you can buy off eBay. Uh, you'll need 14 millimeters with nuts, okay, and I'd also suggest you let those holes a touch uh, with a three millimeter drill. Uh, that piece goes on top of there, like so. And if you look round here, you'll see that there's a hole up there for the servo horn to, to stick in. I'll put it round that way so you can see on that way, just there. So you'll see that I've got some M3 bolts just down there, which go up there on the top. This one needs a bit of Velcro. Then again, this one's a work in progress. What I'm going to be doing with this one is actually putting two uh, and then put that one on there, which is only a pan. 
So I've got pan and tilt for the front. I can then use a video switcher and then switch to the rear facing one, which is pan only as well. And I'll have two cameras, top and bottom, uh, one facing forwards, one facing backwards, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, anyway, coming back to topic. Yeah, uh, definitely print in ABS if you can. You can print in PLA. Uh, there's a PLA print just there which is not coming out very well on the camera, and uh, there's a black version, but just be aware, uh, ABS if you can, okay, 0.2 millimeter resolution, uh, and not get the heated bed up really, really well. Again, you know, you'll know your filaments better than what I do. Uh, and let's see this actually in action. So you're gonna have to excuse me, just gonna have to pop the camera down here on the side of me, uh, and we will get that connected up. And this won't be ideal because it'll be moving one in the wrong, one in the right direction, one in the wrong direction. So there we go. They were powered up now. There we go. So to give you an idea of the range of movement which you can get with this. So look at the amount of movement which you get on that. And that's just a standard servo on the top. Bring this back round again. We'll get this the right way. There we go. So you'll see that I've got mine not tilting up that far because I don't want to look up in the sky. It's more looking down, which I'm interested in. And you'll see that that's the kind of range of movements which you have uh, available to you. And that's why you also want a 180 degree survey. It's Eternity, I forget the actual part number. I'll put that in the video description for you. Uh, and they've done really, really well for me. But do learn, I need to, I'm just, the reason why I'm making the video is that, oh, for, oh well, Number one, let's cut this out so that you'll know about these. And I'll put the link to the Thingiverse files uh, in the video description for you. But this one here, I've got to come back and work on it because the gap down here is too too big. Okay, so this can then look. Can you see that that rocks? Okay, if you imagine that we've got, then got the weight on there and then we're landing, that's not good. We're going to break our servo. Okay, so instead, what we need to do is make sure it's nice and tight like we've got down there and you'll see on this one here there's the only rock is in that servo and that's it okay oh and also where we're talking about tips so i've got some of this braided stuff as well and i've been gluing that to the back of the servo uh, and to, just to protect the wires so you imagine they're moving around uh, and it gives them a little bit of extra uh, well it's protection is the word which I'm looking for. So there we go, that is the 3D printed pan or pan. So you can either have just the pan version with the base. So let me put that down like so. So you can either have the pan, which like, looks like that. But by the way, you'll most likely want to print this up that way round. Sounds counterintuitive, uh, but that's the best way of printing that one is upside down. Uh, and on the Thingiverse website, if there have been a put a version on there which has got the supports. Uh, made for you. That's making a funny noise. I can shut up. Uh, you'll need at least one base. Remember the tip for the bases is that you want to make sure that there's no gap. You can see the size of the gap there. That's not good. That means this whole system can rock backwards and forwards and that will break uh, the connector. Uh, and then if you need something strong to uh, screw into, pop, print it off another one, stick it underneath. And then for the pan and tilt, uh, really, really straightforward. Uh, you'll need, again, a 180 degree servo. You'll need a nine gram or 12 gram metal gear servo for uh, the tilt mechanism. And you will also need some M3 bolts, which need to be 14 millimeters or slightly longer uh, with nuts in the inside. So you can see what I've just been and done there on that one. That's some M3 aluminum. Well, actually, I think it's stainless steel bolts, which I've got on that one. Uh, and that's it. Really, really simple little platform. Uh, and like I said back at the beginning, uh, a big thank you, big thumbs up to uh, Andrew Bolton for allowing me to share these files with you. I think that they are super, super cool. Uh, and as you can see that I'm gonna be using them on my XUAV clouds and uh, on my mini Talon as well. So with that said, the link to uh, Thingiverse is down in the video description. The files are free. Uh, and that's it from myself, Matt. Cheerios!